Welcome to Weekly Digest, where we highlight the works of ministers of government as they push the administration's development agenda. Minister of Amerindian Affairs Pauline Sukai has stressed the importance of villages organizing activities to honor their establishment, emphasizing that such events serve as a reflection of remarkable progress. Minister Sukai expressed these sentiments while participating in the Marakabai Village Day celebrations on Saturday. Even though it may be a community activity with various villagers being engaged with different um, fun-like events, whether it's in sports, culture, pageantry, it all embodies the history from where you were to where you are now, building a one Guyana. In building a one Guyana, His Excellency has recognized that we are one people. He has recognized that whatever abounds in this country should be shared by all, and that where the gaps exist, that special attention will be paid to those gaps so that he can minimize the gaps. As the One Guyana platform continues to guide the efforts of government, Guyanese have a duty to embrace each other's culture. Minister of Public Works Bishop Juan Edgel made the statement while speaking at the Interfaith Service in Suzdike on the East Bank de Marara on Sunday. Our job as Guyanese is that we must look at each other and respect each other even when we have differences of religion cultures, place of origin, or we even have different colors. We, we, we are not the same color tone. There is no one that is inferior, and there is no one that is superior. We are one Guyana. On Sunday, the National Agricultural Research and Extension Institute, NARI, in collaboration with the Environmental Management Consultants EMC Foundation, hosted a mangrove walking tour along the shoreline from Movie Town to Ogle Gas Station. Minister of Agriculture Zulfikar Mustafa said these events are important as mangroves help to effectively combat climate change. It's very important for us, and we as a government recognize it. It's been identifying our LCDS 2030, the importance of mangrove. We can't do it by ourselves. We need that partnership. We need that collaboration. I am happy to see so many organizations on board this morning. Guyana will soon start the trial for millet production as the Ministry of Agriculture has received a quantity of finger and barnyard millet seeds. Agriculture Minister Zulfikar Mustafa received a donation from outgoing Indian High Commissioner to Guyana, Dr. K.J. Srinivasa, on Friday. The millet trial will commence on 50 acres of land. Millets are cereal grains often used to feed pets, livestock, and birds, but it is growing in consumer popularity due to it being gluten-free and a good source of protein, fiber, and micronutrients. Minister Mustafa expressed gratitude to the government of India for their support, which contributes to the country's aggressive food security efforts. So millet is a very um, good crop for us in terms of um, what we are trying to do to, to, to get food security, to reduce the food import bill, and millet is a crop that is an indigenous, indigenous crop which was neglected over the years. And I think that Guyana is leading the charge in food security. We want to reduce the, um, the food import bill of CARICOM by 25%. And you know the president, our president, His Excellency President Irfan Ali, he is the leader in agriculture. And I think this is an appropriate time that we start the crop in the Caribbean, right here in Guyana. The Public infrastructure has always been viewed as government's responsibility, but with recent economic expansion, there have been many investments by private companies in this sector. Senior Minister in the Office of the President with Responsibility for Finance, Dr. Ashni Singh, says government welcomes these new developments. There was a time when we would have thought that Schools and hospitals were government business. We have in the room today, in this room today, private providers of educational services, private providers of health care services, because there's a market for education, there's a market for, for health care. 
And we welcome this. The Ministry of Finance on Monday hosted the One Guyana Metemji cooking competition in commemoration of Emancipation Day. Events such as this remind us of how fortunate we are as a country to be part of such a rich and beautiful, diverse tapestry. There are very few countries of the world where you have so many ethnicities living, working, studying and playing harmoniously together as we do in Guyana. We live together, we go to school together, we work together, we play together, have fun together, we socialize together as an embodiment of the oneness of Guyana, but a oneness that is built on a rich diversity. Minister of Public Works Bishop Juan Edgel on Sunday reaffirmed the government's commitment to ensuring that no citizen is disenfranchised by ongoing infrastructural projects. Minister Edgel made the remarks during a consultation activity hosted at a Luziknan Community Center ground, East Coast Amararo. Our commitment is that none of you will be disenfranchised. We are not here to shut down economic activity. I want to make that very clear. As a matter of fact, we want to encourage economic activity. But what we are simply here to do is to ensure wherever there are potential areas of conflicts because of encumbrances or the movement of places, homesteads, based upon the alignment we should discuss it. Minister within the Ministry of Public Works, Diodat Indar, has highlighted the tireless work and support government has given to the manufacturing and services sectors within the past three years. He made these statements on Thursday evening when he attended the Guyana Manufacturing and Services Association's mid-year dinner and launch of its 60th anniversary activities. Small businesses are no longer small. They're growing to medium-sized medium businesses and then to large businesses simply because they are partnering with the right partners and they're developing the comp their companies. And we are providing the environment for that. Guyanese will now benefit from secure implementation of electronic commerce with the passage of the Electronic Communications and Transactions Bill. The bill was passed in the National Assembly on Thursday. It paves the way for advanced and more efficient transactions through the authentication of electronic connections. All of these initiatives, legislative and otherwise, are parts of a comprehensive whole that is designed to facilitate modernization of the state and make it responsive to the demands of the 21st century. Minister within the Ministry of Housing and Water, Susan Rodriguez, on Friday inspected two water treatment plants along the east bank of Damararo, where construction is progressing smoothly. The minister noted that based on observations, the Caledonia treatment plant could be finished before the scheduled time frame. Right, so today we are on the site of the Caledonia water treatment plant. This is one of the new water treatment plants. The timeline for this is December 2024, but after visiting this site today, I am of the opinion and my engineers are of the opinion that this, this water treatment plant can be completed uh, well ahead of schedule. A bill to amend the anti-money laundering and countering the financing of Terrorism Act of 2009 was early Friday morning passed in the National Assembly. The bill seeks to modify the act to meet the best practice standards of the Financial Action Task Force and improve the abilities and powers of law enforcement in combating money laundering, terrorism and proliferation financing. Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs Mohavir Anil Nandlal, who presented the amendment bill, noted that the AML CFT Act is required to be updated periodically, implementing recommendations from an international regulatory body. These directions and these recommendations are, are conceived and crafted based upon experts and examination of international trends in the area of AML-CFT 
and terrorist financing. As the landscape of these offenses change, as they become more complex, as they become more sophisticated, as they become more prevalent, as they change their character, so will the recommendations that will come to meet the changes and exigencies of what is obviously an evolving phenomenon. Meanwhile, the Guyana Compliance Commission Bill of 2023 was also passed in the National Assembly on Friday morning. That bill allows for the appointment of a body to enhance the compliance, guidance and training regime of money laundering, terrorism financing and proliferation financing in Guyana. This brings us to the end of this edition of Weekly Digest. For these and other government-related stories, do log on to our website at dpi.gov.ui and our social media platforms as well. Goodbye.